Five rules I follow to hit 2,000 ELO fast. Right, and we've got a bonus tip at the end, and I, I was on a call the other day with an international master, Belger Jababa, Badur Jababa's brother, and he told, I asked him what's the most important thing for me to study. I'll reveal that at the very end, and it will probably shock you, by the way. So we've got a massive one today. So I've got five rules, and yeah, I put some effort into this video. I've got some nice things lined up. So the first thing I want to get into is, the, uh, this is the biggest thing I ever see. Whenever I'm coaching someone, on a slightly lower rated this guy's i mean this guy's actually 1300 is they always just try and prove something in the very they always try and go for an attack so the first thing is kind of just sit back and relax i'm going to show you because you're going to relate to this so much so we see the game right and, and, and off the bat he's, he's like he's always trying to prove something like he's always just trying to win material like bro sit back and just cast your king and get your pieces into the game then you can start attacking me but it's just pre it's these premature attacks it's like every single move has to do something see how it's like every single move has to kick me back really watch us see bang every move is almost like they're just trying to kick me back and this is my uh, great student james you see how every single move, oh, I've got, I've got to change to bishop now. Ready, watch, watch, watch. Back, oh, I've, I've got to break in the center. It's like every single move has to do something. You know, sometimes you just got to play calm moves. Get your pieces into the game. It's like, great, I'll give you an analogy. Imagine you're playing football. Imagine you're playing basketball. You're not gonna just try to run the pitch by yourself, are you? You're gonna wait for the whole team to get up. You're gonna slowly get the team up the thing. And before you know it, you're slam dunking. So it's the exact same thing. And so that's the master first one. I'll tell you a funny story, by the way, how I got this eye, because it relates to chess. You should be able to see it, but kind of like a black eye. So I was wrestling with some guy, and I was getting kind of frustrated. Uh, I was trying everything, and it wasn't really working. I was trying double legs. I was trying, you know, neck collar ties and all of that stuff. And I keep, he kept just taking me down. I kept, I kept losing. So I, I said to myself, you know what? I did not care. I am taking this guy down. So I kind of, I stepped back a bit. After about three minutes of sparring, I stepped back a bit. We've got two minutes left. I stepped back a bit. I just launched, I almost just Superman, Superman fucking air dive, hoping to just grab his legs to take him down. And as I went flying through the air, like Superman, which, by the way, there's a reason why you don't do this. I think I just, I just clipped his knee. I just hit his, hit me by the knee, and I just went, yeah, went to the floor. So that it's a human chest really but instead of using instead of using you know my knight or my pieces i'm just using my body parts so it's something very interesting there but it all ties back in it's like you know you've got to have a good position before you can do stuff you know when i did that superman bloody air dive i got need in the face you're getting need in the face in a chess game so it all relates now my second tip is a very important one we're going to look at this game very quick so it, this second tip is don't be annoyed when you lose. Now, this might be, you might, well, don't be annoyed when you lose. So learn how to lose properly. You either, my mindset is like, you, this is probably the most important one, by the way. You either win or you win. I'll show you a game, a very frustrating game I lost recently to an 18, this is five minute blitz games, by the way. So I lost this game to this guy and look how, just, just look at him, man. What is he doing? You know, he's playing the most crazy moves ever. And I lost this game, and it was so unfortunate, because I lost it like this, and I know if you're watching this, you can relate to it. But they don't develop their pieces, and they go for one of these attacks he's with. I never, it was just so frustrating. But the right mindset I need to adopt after this game is, okay, I lost to this guy, and he was playing, like, he's kind of playing just bad anyway. He's playing stupid moves. Okay, even though it's frustrating, cool. My mindset is, yes, I've won, because I've won knowledge. I'm never going to lose to this again. So I'm winning or I'm winning. Whenever I load up the chess game, because a lot of people, they get really pissed off when you lose. I was discussing this the other day with my boxing coach. He said, oh, I just hate when I lose. It ruins my whole day. What you've got to realize is you either win or you win. So you either actually genuinely win or you lose, but you gain some very, because you've got to think about it. where's your end goal? You want to be stuck at this rating forever? You're trying to get there because to get there, you're going to have to lose. These lo these losses are going to be golden gems. So they're actually wins. So to me, I'm either winning or I'm winning. So that's a very important one. Now my third one, and by the way, we're building our way up to the final thing Belger Jababa told me. It was a very nice one. I was on a call with him. Um, I posted Posted the call in the Meister network. If you're interested, if you're in the Meister network, go check that one out. So the next tip is 
Don't get pissed off when you lose a pawn. Now, it's all mindset. I used to resign games. I'd be down a pawn. Now, the right way you want to be looking at it, I'll show you the recent game I played. I end up doing a nice sacrifice. Cool, I'm down material. Bang. So, I'm down material. What you've got here, I did, I did actually mess this position up. I should have actually gone here um, at some point. What you have to realize in chess is that you can lose a pawn. Look, ready, I lost a pawn. What does this open? Okay, bang, I've got the open B file. Your mindset has to be, okay, I'm losing material or I've lose, lost a pawn. What do I get in compensation? Don't just be annoyed that you lost the pawn. Now, there are going to be times when you've lost like a central pawn. It can be a bit annoying. For here, I kind of go down a bit of, um, I kind of, my position isn't too good. I end up blundering, but I kind of kept calm even though I've kind of lost this and he's probably going to trap my knight. So even though I'm up one piece, he might actually win my knight. So I'm, I'm in trouble here. So even though he kind of ended up blundering here, it's because I kept calm here. My mindset over here was, okay, he's, shit, he's going to win this. I, I've sacrificed a pawn. I've got the open B file. How can I work this? So losing, don't be annoyed when you lose a pawn. Right, the next one is a massive one. And this is probably going to be one of the biggest ones as well. With tie, everything ties in here is prioritize experience over, you know, puzzles and learning and reading. It's like with boxing. It's like this fit, there's people in the gym known as gym champions because they're amazing on the boxing bag, but they can't spar because when you spar, it's quite different because everything doesn't work because it's a moving target, they're thrown back at you. It's prioritized experience. Magnus Carlsen does not even, I don't think Magnus Carlsen even reads books. If you watch the channel, if you stuck around for a bit, you know, I've done lots of ones on Emery Tate. He became an international master, only ever read one book. So don't, prioritize puzzles and all that because you can become good at them but at the end of the day playing games is where the money's at it's like reading books it's like you know you can read a hundred books and sit in your home all day but you're gonna learn a lot more by going out climbing mountains and all that now my fifth tip is before we get into the very last one which belgad jababa told me is prioritize mo this is a bit on the board prioritize piece mobility over material any day of the week you're going to learn so much more about chess that way so just that's a very quick one just prioritize piece mobility here i'm down but I've, you know if, if if you sacrifice pawn but you got his king open just go for that it's going to be a golden one i'll show you how the game unfolded i end up winning this and now my final one in which belger jababa told me again if you do want to see the um full training session i might post it on you there's going to be more but the, most of them are going to be posted on the meister network the one that belger jababa told me and which, by the way, is the brother of J Bador Jababa, who is the greatest Georgian chess player of all time. I said to him, I, I'll tell you what I said to him. I said, Belguer, what do I study? Do I do openings, middle games, or end games? And he said, look, he said, look, you know, your rating's 2000 ELO. He says, why are you focusing on that? He said, all you've got to do is just focus on calculation. He said, why would you focus on end games when your calculation sucks? So he just said, do cal and even though it does tie in, it's it's not it's not about learning openings. It's about getting that calculation good because he said he said the only difference between a grandmaster super grand he said the only difference between a super grandmaster like his brother or ex super grandmaster and himself is the calculations is all there they've all got their calculation and the very last thing they did was learn the openings so learning the openings and all of that is the last thing uh what you really need to do is just get really good at really good at calculations so that's the final thing if you enjoyed this video that is the end thank you for your time and attention have a good day Ooh.